morning, ma'am. Sure is a fine day today, ain't it, ma'am? Just getting this washing up. Should have had it up long ago, too. It's ain't Dicey Johnson you're looking for, ma'am. Here I be. bringing my child back to me. She'd be such a far peace and long journey. And this be the moment of her return. Amen. Granny. No fretting, honey. Because you're home safe and sound. <laughs> so come on in and let Granny skate. You have a white friend. Come on. Come on, Shelby. Come on. Y'all do me good to see you stand there. Just think my pinky baby all growed up and come home to her old granny. How did you know I'd come back? That's why I sent you away, sugar, so you'd come back. Come back and help the sick and the halt and the needy. Remember what I said the day I put you on the train? I said, pinky baby, no matter how far you go, how much you learn, you got to bring it all back with you. That's why I'm saying Because the Bible say, a little leaven shall leaven the whole lump. Granny. Granny, did you ever think I might want to stay up north? There's some things we got to trust the Lord about, Pinky. Some things we can't do ourselves. We got to depend on him. Everything just like you left it, sugar. What is it, Pinky? Oh, I wish you'd never sent me away. You mean you wish you grew up ignorant, no count, good for nothing? You wish you never learned to read and write and make your way in this oh, world? No, but don't you see? Yes, Pinky, I do see. Let me say something once and for all and never again. Why is you write me less and less as time go by? Why is it after you go to the hospital I get no letter at all? No, you don't need to say nothing. You think I don't know. You think poor old ignorant woman like me, living in a shack like this, don't know nothing. But you're wrong, Pinky. I do know. And I know what you've done. And you know I never told you pretend you is what you ain't. I didn't mean to, Granny. It just happened. But that's a sin before God and you know it. It, it was a conductor on the train. He put me back in another car. The white one. But he knowed who you was. I put you where you belong no, myself. No, no, it, it was after that. When they changed conductors. Then why you ain't tell the new conductor? Oh, Granny, I don't know. I was only a child. Then what about school? What about that? Other children talk about their kinfolks, don't they? What you say when they ask you about yawn? You tell them who your granny is? Oh, shame. Shame be on your pinky. Denying yourself like Peter denied the good Lord Jesus. Here, get out. Get down. That's where you belong. Now you tell the Lord what you've done. Ask his forgiveness on your immortal soul. Come on out here and get your breakfast. I don't want to hear another word from you about what you've done again as long as you live. Oh, 
Yes, Granny. You do this much every day? Hey, what's the day? Except the time I was down sick with pneumonia three years ago. Here, I'll help you. I ain't sent you away for you to come back and take in washing. Granny, I, I was awful glad when you stopped sending me money. What you mean? I didn't want you breaking your back from me forever. Stop? I ain't never missed once. I give Jake Waters that money just like I've been doing every week since his pa died. I gotta see Jake about that. I'm kind of superstitious about him. I'll go see Jake. I'll get it back for you. How much do you get for a wash like this? Oh, they don't count for as money goes. You mean you're not paid for it? Of course not, to Miss Elms. Now I can see it's Miss Elms. You mean to say she doesn't pay you for it? Not in cash money, Miss Emma. Ain't got no cash money. Besides, she's old now, old and sick. She has a house full of valuable antiques, hasn't she? What's well, their family things? Can't sell them. Besides, why are you so set again, Miss Emma? She ain't never hurt you. Look at her house. Slave built, slave run, and run down ever since. I went through that gate into her garden once, just once when I was a little girl. She ordered me out. I'll never forget it. Oh, but Miss Emma ain't never liked children traipsing around in her garden. Why, when she had that boarding school, she made them girls play on the other side of the house. Guess I'll look in on her now like I do every morning to see if she's all right.
call you lazy devil, you slow. Can you tell me where Jake Waters lives? Right down the corner. corner there. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Tommy. Hi. Is this where Jake Waters lives? Mm -mm. You're Jake Waters, aren't you? Uh, yes, ma'am, I am. Uh, this is my house here. I'm Patricia Johnson. Who? You know Mrs. Dicey Johnson, don't you? Well, I'm her grandchild. Pinky! Well, what do you know? Come right in, Miss Pinky. I'm mighty glad to see you. Mighty glad. Yes, sir. I've come to get the money my grandmother gave you to send me. All the money. Come on in. <laughs> I've been trying to get over to see you, Granny, but every time I start over there, something happens to stop me. <laughs> yes, I'm mighty busy these days. Mighty busy. Well, this won't take long. I shan't ask you why you held back the money so long as you return it. Oh, sure, sure. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> Sit down. You, oh, <laughs> you know, you've been away a long time. What about the money? You'll get it. You'll get it. Every cent of it. Sit down. Why'd you come back, Miss Pinky? Never figured that you would. Why shouldn't I? This is my home. Now, don't give me that, Miss Pinky. Jake's smart. He sees things. Man, most likely, huh? White man? Couldn't tell him and couldn't not tell him, huh? Look, Jake, I... I oh, of course, of course. Didn't mean to be nosy, Miss Pinky. Jake's your friend. He only wants to help you. Well, you can help me by giving me back my grandmother's money. Yeah, uh, yes, the money. Well... Never keep much cash money on me. Keep it all in the bank, Miss Pinky. Is it far to the bank? Bank's closed today, Miss Pinky. Saturday. Very well. You can give me whatever you have on hand, and I'll tell my grandmother you'll pay her the rest on Monday. Well, of course, I never keep much money no, around Jeff, the house. Would I... you mind just giving me what you have? Just a minute. I'll look around. Money I got in the house. Ten to five. It makes fifteen dollars. I'll tell my grandmother you'll give it rest on Monday. Monday, sure. You'll be sure and come by, Monday. Well, I'll be there, all right. Jake, what you doing with my money? Rosie, you what know you doing with my you? money? Rosie, you know that is a nice child. I don't care who she is. Pinky. Well, Miss Pinky, that happens to be oh, my Sam? money, and you just hand it over. Come high, don't you? Drop that money. Don't see you. Why, you are sick of your arm. Why open if you don't give me my money? Hey there, what's up? going on here? Oh, nothing at all, Captain. Everything's all right now. They've been bothering you, ma'am? Well, you dress up, girl. Got a knife, Chief. Okay, get it. <laughs> well, I reckon it's just as well we come up when we did. Uh, just what was the trouble, ma'am? I don't care to make any charges. Oh, just a minute, if you please, ma'am. Well, I reckon you're strange in this part of the country, but, uh... Well, this fella Jake, did he molest you in any way, ma'am? Well, no, no. And the girl, um, what about her, ma'am? Now, if she even so much as thought of threatening you, we want to know about it. Or if she give you any of her impudence. <laughs> Shut up, girl. Oh, excuse me, sir, but why are you two white men mamming her? She's nothing but a low-down colored gal. <laughs> Tried to steal my man. Make him stop, stop money. Make him you. stop. You heard what she said. He's got to slap her down. Unless it's true. Yes, it's true. I'm colored. Yeah. My grandmother's Mrs. Dicey Johnson. Mrs. Dicey Johnson? I ought to slap them both down, Chief. Oh, hold it. 
Well, I think I'll be going now. Go. You ain't going anywhere till I tell you. Get in that car. You mean I'm under arrest? <laughs> what do you think? On what charges are you holding? You heard what I said. Get in that car. Don't worry. I'll fix it. I know the judge. Let me handle this. There's going to be some trouble in the search. Then I took this nap off with Judge Walker. He's in a garter. So I just brought them all in. Is this your knife? She's the one started all the trouble coming and taking my money. That'll do. Did you find anything on the other one? I didn't search her. Nothing there, Judge. She had plenty of time to throw we'll it away, him. sir. I can send you up for this knife business. Yes. And I will if I have one more word about this matter, about a knife or a razor or any other kind of trouble. Is that clear? Yes. Now go. Thank you, sir. As for you, Jake. Yes, sir. I was just... You've been in this kind of trouble before. Yes. Never this keep your hands off other people's money. No, sir. Never touch a nickel that ain't mine, sir. That's enough. That's enough. I'm going to let you off this time. Oh, thank you. Much obliged, Judge Walker. But next time will be the last. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, as to you, Pinky, if Jake owes you any money and doesn't pay it, you let me know. I'll see if he does. Thank you. I remember years ago after your mother died, I remember when Dicey sent you away to school. And Dicey's a good woman. I've always thought highly of her, and I'd like to be able to think as well of her grandchild. I've done nothing, Judge Walker, and I'm telling you the truth. I'm not saying you aren't, but... Uh... But because I'm college, you don't believe me. You're not sure. That's it, isn't it? How'd you make out up yonder? I graduated. Then I took three years training as a nurse. Oh, I didn't know. You managed to do all that on what Dyson could send? Yes. Hmm. I won scholarships. I worked, waited tables. I got along. Oh, that's good. That's very good. All the more reason you should keep on being a credit and a comfort to your grandmother. You've had advantages which are denied to most members of your race. People like Jake and Rosalia, for example. Just try to keep out of trouble. That's all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, Granny. Why don't you try and... Go on somewhere, honey? Just for a walk. Evening, Sister Johnson. Come in, Jake. And stop sneaking in here behind me like that, too. I told Miss Pinky I'd drop around, so here I is. Man of my word. Good. Pinky, give me the $15 you're giving. Said you'd be here to give me the rest. I guess she was kind of riled after that little run-in. Run-in? What mm -hmm. you mean, run-in? Oh, nothing. You're working mighty late, Sister Johnson. Oh, I reckon I'll die with the shoes on my feet and that old smooth line in my hand, good Lord willing. <laughs> You're a worker from way back yonder. Yes, sir? I always admire good work. Well, look who's talking. Well, there's work and then there's work. My biggest work I do with my brain. Liable to get top-heavy over working that brain, eh, Jake? That's the way you get to rise up in the world. No more being the skim milk for Jake Waters. He's gonna be the cream on top. I ain't gotta be cream first for it rise. Where are you going, sister? Well, I gotta take this wash back to Miss Emma's. Oh. Give me that. Don't you want me to read it for you? Give it back, I say. I can see mine. That. I can see Give that. me that letter. I'm not gonna read this letter, nobody. Well, you pointed up, didn't you? Well, that ain't gonna stop nothing. I got a feeling that a fast letter coming like that is a shadow moving before. If 
think so, Jake? Folks is coming. They come treading on the shadows. Of course, I can stop them. I got his name and address right here in my head. Didn't I tell you I worked with my brain? I can write a letter back to him. Say, I never seen no colored man write like that. With two stamps on the letter and his name and address in the corner with the MD after it. That means doctor. And you think you'd be doing right? Well, you want to keep Miss Pinky, don't you? I'll send him a telegram. That'll stop him just like that. Don't you worry, sister. Jake's going to take care of everything. Of course, uh, telegrams cost money. And I like to do everything business-like. That'll be a deductible item from what I owe you. Can we give you a lift? No, thank you. Excuse me, ma'am. You must be a stranger around here. We can't let no white girl walk by herself through this here nigger section. I live in this section. You what? I said I live here. Now, just let me alone. She lives here. Well, what do you know? Who'd ever figure that? Man, that's the whitest dinge I ever saw. Boy, look at that little swamp rabbit goat. What do you say? Let's go get her. Boy, let's go now. We ain't gonna hurt you, baby. Now, don't be afraid, baby. We ain't gonna hurt you. Yes, sure. Just want to have a little mm -hmm. fun, baby. Now take it easy. Well, you get old. Stop! Come here, honey. No! No! Stop! Stop! Please! No! No! What a build on her. Let's see your face, baby. Hold up your face. Oh, you're pretty. You're pretty. You're real pretty. <laughs> What's the matter, baby? Fire. You want a drink? Hey, Al, give me that bottle. Come <laughs> back here, gal. Come on, back here, girl. Ah, let her go. Joe says her heart again. Her heart give out. It happened while I was putting the linen in the closet, talking to her when she took her to spell. So I run down the corner fast as I could, phone Doc Joe. He picked me up on the way back. He come that fast. Her heart? How old is she? Oh, a year or two older than me, maybe. Because she never allowed that to my face. 
Lord, I kind of hoped you'd take me before you took me, Sam. I kind of hoped you would. But that will be done. Everyone has to die, Granny. Baby, but the least we can do is ease their passing. I'm so glad you're here. Seems like the Lord sent you here out of pure goodness. Me? I said, Doc Joe, I said, never you mind. And was I proud to say it? I said, never you mind, sir. My pinky's here, and she's a good nurse. So he's sitting there waiting for you right now. You told him I'd nurse her? Of course, honey. Doc Joe say everything depend on good nursing. He says she got to have a trained nurse. And he can't lay his hand on one for love or money. If Miss M had the money, which she ain't. Then tell him to keep right on looking. I'm not interested. But she'll die. And let her die. Thank you. I didn't mean that, but Granny, try to understand my side. I only came back here because I hadn't anywhere else to go. I'd forgotten what it was like. I've been away a long time, Granny. I've known another kind of life. I've been treated like a human being. Try to understand, Granny, like an equal. Don't you see I can't go back into that house? Haven't I had enough without that? Pinky? I worked long and hard to give you an education. And if they done educated the very hard at you, everything I've worked and slaved so hard for is wrong. Now, hear me. You're going up to Miss Ames. You're going to take good care of her like the nurse you is. Or I swear on the Holy Bible, I'll rip the living daylights out you. Yes, I'm going away. I should never have come back here. Here, let me help you. Try to wrinkle. Reckon I better run the smoothing iron over before you pack it. Kind of pretty, too. Must take a heap of study and learn to be a nurse. Of course, it's three years, as you know. Miss Am didn't have no training at all. Why should she? Her kind never learns anything useful. Didn't stop her from nursing me, though, when I was down sick with pneumonia and fixing to die. Miss Am nursed you? I'd like to see that. Where you been living, child? What sort of stuff they teach up yonder? Have I put in all my work on you for you to turn out to be nothing but low-down trash? Yes, Pinky. Miss M did nurse me. Don't believe me, ask Dr. Joe. Miss M stay here, sleep here in your little room. She cook for me, feed me with a spoon, wash my poor, tired body, even empty my slops like she was my loving servant. Now she's fixing to die. And my own grandchild done harden her heart again. Oh, yes. Glad you've come. She's a pretty low ebb. Under the hypo right now. No fear of disturbing her. Oh, yes. Pinky, isn't it? The nurse, of course. Your granny's talked a lot about you. I didn't realize that 
Now, some uh, things I've jotted down here for you. Really not very much we can do right now. She's reached the age where the mechanism begins to slow down. If she has another attack. Have you ever given a hypo? I'm a graduate nurse. Yes, yes, of course. Well, I'm very glad to leave Miss M with a graduate nurse. There's no phone in this house, and I'm pretty hard to get hold of, so it'll be a matter of using your own judgment. I understand, Doctor. Your hat? Uh, no. Yeah. Yes, thank you. You know, of course, that Miss M can't afford to pay for a trained nurse. Or do you? I know, Doctor. Might be, though, that some of her old pupils could pay you something. Most of them still... No, live. Doctor, it isn't a question of money. I'm doing it for my grandmother. Well, I'll look in tomorrow afternoon. Good night, Doctor. Who are you? I'm your nurse. Darcy's girl, Pinky, aren't you? Yes. Why didn't you say so? Come over here, let me see you. You didn't call yourself Pinky when you're off up yonder, did you? No. Now well, speak up. What name did you go by? Patricia. Pinky's better. What are you doing there? Dr. McGill, that's some pills for you. You needn't think I'm going to dig any more of Joe McGill's stupid dope. They'll relieve the pain, Miss Anne. You are in pain. Of course I'm in pain. What do you think? Did you die in ease and ecstasy? What's this thing on my feet? Hot water bottle. Your feet were cold. Take it away. I won't have it. Bricks, much better. Over there on the hearth. Put it in the embers. Go to the wardrobe. Open the door. Look on the second shelf. You'll find a bit of blanket. Cover the brick. Take your hands out of there. I said the second shelf. Miss M, I'm not dishonest if that's what you're implying. Furthermore, I don't have to do... Miss Anne. Miss Anne. Miss Anne. Now make tracks, y'all. Don't want to see hiding a hairy till tomorrow.
Is that you, Pinky, honey? It's Pinky. Miss Emmy. No, she's better. Praise the Lord. Talk to Joe's with her now. Said for me to come on down and get some rest. You're supposed to sit with her for the rest of the afternoon. Then you get some sleep, honey. Oh, I don't feel like sleeping. What you doing with my clothes? Oh, you being so busy and all, I reckon I'd unpack for you. Put them back. They can stay packed till I leave. It's only a matter of a few days at the most. Doc Joe say that? A few days? I can see for myself. Oh, for heaven's sake, Granny. It's only a mean old woman. She's driving me and nagging me ever since she woke up this morning. She do that? That's good. What's good about it? And she do feel better, sure enough. And when the same start feeling better, the more coniferous she act. Pay no attention to her worse than ways, sugar. She don't mean nothing by it. She means to put me in my place and keep me there, just as she's kept you all these years. Oh, Pinky child, when folks is real friends, there ain't no such thing as place. Hello? Anybody home? Miss Johnson? I beg your pardon. You're Miss Pinky Johnson? Yes, sir. You're looking for me? I'm Dr. Kennedy from over in Leesburg. Oh, how did you, Doctor? My wife and I heard you were here. We'd like you to come over to the house to dinner. Oh, it's If you'll just set the date, any night that's convenient. I'm on a case now, and after that, I'm going away. When you come back, then, your being here is the best news we had in a long time. We have some girls over in Leesburg, high school graduates, but no chance for regular training. With your help, we can set up a real nursing school. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid it's out of the question. You Excuse see... me. How are you and your family these days, Doctor? Fine, thank you, Aunt Daisy. You see, I... I'm not planning to come back. I see. I have never been north. I took my M.D. at Meharry. I was tempted to go, of course, but I felt my job was here. These girls I was telling you about, it's going to be kind of hard to disappoint them. I'm sorry, but my plans are all made. Well, good luck to you, Miss Johnson. On that candlestick. My great grandfather bought that when they sold Thomas Jefferson's things. Things. Mm. They last longer than people. This furniture was made to present to Henry Clay if he was elected. The voters thought different. Grandfather bought it at auction. Now look what you've done. My best brooch. Well, you've looked at it long enough. What do you think of it? It's very nice, Miss Hill. Don't be evasive. I want the truth. What do you think of it? It's one of those rather clever imitations one can buy in the chain stores for a dollar. Ninety-eight cents. Hmm. Any fool would know that. Now, go dust that center table. Bring me a pitcher of water. Miss Emma, I've already done those things, and you know it. Don't be impudent. It isn't impudent to say what's true. I'm a trained nurse, and I won't be spoken to like that. If you don't like it here, why did you come? Because my grandmother said she'd whip the living daylights out of me if I didn't. <laughs> that dicey, nobody like it. Did she really say that? That's the sort of answer you want to hear, isn't it? No. I prefer the truth. You forgot that fire screen. Don't be so upset. I'll be dead soon. Then you'll be free to go back north again. Going to give up your nursing when you get back up yonder? Nursing's my profession. In certain places, a nurse is treated with respect. Nobody deserves respect as long as she pretends to be something she isn't. How I live my life is my own business, Miss M. Of course it is. It isn't your husband's business or your children's. You can go now, Pinky. I'll be all right till your grandmother comes. You can't dismiss me like that. 
Yes, you did when I was a child and you drove me out of your garden. Oh. You remember? Yes, very clearly. What do you want me to do? Stay here, live this sort of life when I don't have to? Just prove you're addicted to the truth like you pretend. Wherever you are, be yourself. What am I then? You tell me. You're the ones that set the standards, you whites. You're the ones that judge people by the color of their skins. Well, by your own standards, by the only ones that matter to you, I'm as white as you are. That's why you all hate me. What should I do, dye my face? Grovel and shuffle? Say yasm and know him? Marry some man like Jake Waters? Carry a razor in my stocking so I won't upset you? Nobody hates you, Pinky. Don't just stand there. Will you leave the room? Go quickly. I hate dawdling. What's wrong? What got into you running off like that? How did you find me? Well, I got your old address from the nun school. And that crazy telegram came signed Pinky Johnson. Why Pinky? I didn't send you any wire. Come on, come on up to the house. What's it all about, Pat? I see you're working, but why here? And why didn't you want me to know? What are you doing, charity work? No, I live here. Is that it? Is it because you were ashamed of telling me you lived in a place like this? I often wonder why you never spoke about your home and family, but... Don't you know who lives in this kind of house? Come on in. Come here, Tom. There's an old colored woman who can't read or write. A washerwoman people around here call Aunt Dicey. There's the basket she carries her clothes in. There's the ironing board she uses. And those are the heavy irons she heats on that old wood stove. Year in and year out, she's washed and ironed and carried her clean clothes to people's back doors through rain and cold and the heat of summer. And she saved her money and lived on the scraps white people gave her. Why? For me, so she could send me off to school, so I could learn to be a nurse. So her granddaughter would be spared the kind of life she's had to live. Her granddaughter? Yes, her granddaughter, me. Now you understand. Pat? My name is Pinky. She's coming. Tom, please, please no, go. I don't want her to find you. All right, sir. I'm going to take a drive. No, no, tomorrow. please. Not until you've told me the whole story. I'm entitled to that. Come on, Pat. day at the hospital. I met you for the first time. At first, I tried to keep you away, even to the point of being rude. That's true, isn't it? Remember? But you wouldn't give up. And then I thought I could take the chance of seeing you, being with you. I'd never been in love before. But I never dreamed it would ever be serious. When I found it was, what kind of daring came over me with your love? 
So I thought I could have everything. For a few weeks, I believed it. Until you wanted to get married. Right away. Remember, you said I'd have to make up my mind sometime. Then I realized what my decision would have to be. So I ran. Poor Pat. I'm not looking for pity. And don't try to tell me it doesn't matter. I couldn't stand that. I won't lie to you. Of course it matters. It makes, makes problems, important problems. But let's try and face them like rational people. Rational? What's rational about prejudice? I'm prejudiced. I'm a doctor, and I hope enough of a scientist not to believe in the mythology of superior and inferior races. It is a tricky business, though. You never know what exists deep down inside yourself. I want to be absolutely sure that nothing like that exists inside of me. It'd be so easy to hurt, Pat. And in this case, too much kindness could easily be misunderstood and hurt worse than cruelty. Man should be able to lose his temper and cuss out his wife once in a while without her misunderstanding the reason. That's why I didn't give way to my impulse when you first told me. I wanted to sort of hold myself under a microscope a little bit longer. I could be sure I was right. What do you mean? I've got two reservations on the plane north from Birmingham tonight. It'll be our secret. Nobody else will ever know. Here. Come on along. We'll stop at your house and pick up your things. Tom, I can't go with you now. Not now. I'm on a case. Well, else. No, this isn't just a case. It's a debt that has to be repaid. That's the true reason? Oh, I swear it is. I'm through with running away. You're being honest with me. I promise you come as soon as you can. Oh, I'll wire you that very minute and take the next train. And if you don't, I'll be here wanting to know why. Oh, I will. Drive too fast. Yes, ma'am. Well, shut off the engine. About time. Oh, so you're the one. I'd heard you were light, but I had no idea you were. Well, you're practically white. What is it you want, please, ma'am? I'm here to see Miss Emma. I'm sorry, she's not supposed to receive visitors. I'm a cousin, Miss Woolley. Oh, yes, Mrs. Woolley. Well, if you'll wait down here, I'll see if Miss Emma can see her. How is she? She's improving. Won't you have a chair, please? Sam, I'm afraid... Uh... I know. Let her come up, but don't leave me alone with her. She'll want to be alone with you, Miss Sam. Well, I don't. How is my dear cousin Sam today? Mm. Well, I'll find out. You sit in that chair. If I knock over the bell, tell her I have to have an enema or something to get rid of her. Miss Sam, I've just started your you lunch. You do what you're told, honey. Mrs. Woolley, Miss Sam can see you now. I know, I can hear. Cousin Anne, what do you mean getting sick like this? When you're 80 years old, you expect to be sick. Sit down. Now, now, naughty, naughty. 80 years young is what we say. I don't. 
It's old, and I won't have it minimized. It takes a lot of living to get there, and pure cussed endurance. Eighty years young, indeed. Yes, yes, Cousin M, of course. That's all now. I'll be sitting here with Cousin you M. Stay there, Pinky. She's a trained nurse. I want her there in case I have a spell. Oh. Now, tell me, dear, are you being taken care of? What can I do for you? Nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, Jeffers and I have been away on a holiday, and we didn't know a thing about it till yesterday. And I said to Jeffers last night, I'm going to see Cousin Em tomorrow, no matter how busy I am. I just have to know whether she's getting every single little thing she needs. And Jeffers said to me, Melba, that's just like you. You can never rest till you know you've done your hook duty. And if you can take a little sunshine into the life of that poor old soul... Cousin Em? She's napping. Oh, is she doped? Just tired. She's been very ill. Well, I'll just sit here till she wakes up. Oh, Pinky, I do believe I forgot to tell George to put the brake on my car. Go down there and make sure it's on. Cousin Em. I never nap, and I'm not doped. My goodness, she's whiter than I am. Prettier, too. Well, it just gives me the creeps. Seriously, Cousin Em, I gotta talk to you alone. It's important. I came here to warn you about this girl, Pinky. My new maid, Rosalia, knows all about her. Now, Melba, I'm not gonna soil my ears by listening to kitchen gossip. Well, for all you know, lying up here in bed, she's stealing you blind. No. Melba, I think I left my brooch over there on the bureau. See if it's still there. Well, I certainly will. I most certainly will. That's just what I've been talking about. Oh, I I is this it? Yeah. Well, thank goodness it's still here. Oh, Mrs. Woolley George says your brake is still on. Why do you think of the brooch? Hmm? Oh, oh, it's lovely, Cousin Em. Priceless, a real antique. Why do you ask? Oh, I know you like jewelry. Just wanted to be sure. I was thinking of making my will. Oh, Cousin Em, you mustn't think of such a thing. Why, it isn't as if you had a lot of relatives. Jeffers and I are the only two you got in the whole world. And I know how strongly you feel about keeping things in the family. Mm -hmm. Oh, what an idea to make a will while you live years and years, dear. Pinky's a nurse. She graduated from one of the best hospitals up yonder. Let's ask her. Think I should be making my will? Well, if you're ever going to make a will, Miss Em, it's time you were getting it done. There, Melba, there's a nurse's opinion. Very sensible. Especially as it agrees with my own. I'm sorry, Mrs. Willie. Miss Em must rest now. Well, she looks fine to me. And besides, we haven't finished our little visit yet, have we, dear? I do feel a little queer. Maybe I have another fit coming on. Fit? That's where they start. Then I go clean out of my head. Oh. Well, in, in that case, I guess I had better be on my way. Oh, you're going? You should come back, won't you? Oh, yes, dear. I'll be in first thing next week. I certainly will. And no more nonsense about making a will, you naughty girl. No more nonsense. Stop that. I won't have you laughing at my relatives. Sorry, Miss Em. She's not a blood relative, is she? No, she married my cousin, Jeff is Woolley. He's my first cousin, once removed. He nearly removed himself clean out of the family when he married her. Jeff has never did have much sense. His father wanted him to study law. He didn't have the brains for it. Took up insurance. Tried to sell me a policy. Life insurance, he called it. I asked him if it ensure that I should live one day longer than the Lord allowed. He said it didn't. So I said, well, call it death insurance. You ought to be ashamed. Mention it to one of your own family. What are you standing there for? Do you want tea or milk with your lunch? Coffee. Miss Em, you know the doctor said... I said coffee and make it strong. Yes, Miss Em. And Pinky. When you bring my tray, bring me paper, pen, and ink. When you wash the dishes, you can take the rest of the afternoon off. I don't like to leave you alone, Miss Him. Then send Dicey over. Well, she can't stay long. This is her afternoon to take the wash into town. Don't argue. Do as I say. I don't want you back here till after five. 
Yes, Miss M. Make that coffee strong. I want the spoon to stand up in it. Yes, Miss M. bed for? I thought I was sitting in a chair. You've had another attack. You've been up and doing too much. Well, whose business is it if I do too much? I'd like to know. Nobody's at all if you want to shorten your life. Flat on her back. No, no. Prop me up. Give me some pillows. I'm not going to lie flat until I'm laid out. <clears throat> It'll be soon enough now. Might as well let her have her own way. It's all I ever wanted, to have my own way. Here, open your mouth. What's that? Dope? Open your mouth. I want some fresh water stuck in my throat. No, I said fresh water. Close the door behind you. There's a draft in here. I want that girl knowing my business. Now go over there and look on the second shelf. In the book. No, no, the other end. The other end. There, now, with the book. There's an envelope in it. Get the envelope. And bring it here. It's my will. I want you to witness it. Of course, surely. Now, you don't have to read it. I just want you to sign it. Here. You'll have to sign it again in my presence. You know my signature? Sign it again, please. These things have to be done legally. No, lawyers have more full regular role than doctors. There. Now put it back in the envelope. Seal it up. Put it away. Who's your executor? You are. Me? Isn't Judge Walker your lawyer? He's retiring. Aren't you my friend? Never mind that now. I don't need it. It's gone down. I didn't think I'm planning to die this minute. I'll be up to meet my classes right after holidays. Mm-hmm. My school. What the girls be doing with me in bed? Don't you worry now. You'll be up and around in a few days. Try to get some sleep now.
fine woman, one of the old school, never afraid to speak her mind or take her stand for what she thought was right. How long, Doctor? Can't tell. Extraordinary vitality, but the last attack, perhaps a week, perhaps only a few hours. Isn't there anything? There now. You did a good job. I might even say a devoted job. Well, I'll stop in first thing tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Please. Oh, something for you, ma'am? Yes, do you have any morning bills, please? Right this way, ma'am. This is our best quality, ma'am. Two ninety-eight. And the last we got in stock. Yes, that'll be fine. I'll take it. I allow you're going to Miss M's funeral, ma'am. They say she had a lot of friends. Miss Viola, come wait on me, please. Sorry, Miss Woolley. Just a minute, please, and I'll be right with you. Where's Mr. Goulby? Oh, excuse me, please, ma'am. I only meant I was... Mr. Goulby? ...busy waiting on someone. I only have to... Mr. Mr. Goulby! ...get the change. Why, yes, Mrs. Woolley. What can I do for you today, please, ma'am? Since when has it been your policy to wait on negras before white folks? Why, I... I'm sorry, Mrs. Woolley. I'm... I'm sure that Miss Viola just just didn't see you, Miss Miss Viola. What? I'm sorry, Mrs. Woolley. I should think you would I be. Now, Mr. Gooby, I repeat, now, since when is it just what policy? would you be interested in this morning? We have some nice new broadcloth. We also have some. What's that? Oh, that's the money. The money, ma'am, she gave me, five dollars. Is that Miss M's money? No, Mrs. Woolley. Would you mind telling me where you did get it? I don't care to say where I got it, Mrs. Woolley. Well, that's all you'll get away with. You can rest assured of that. Charge this. What's going on? I'll take my veil now, Mr. Gooby. Unless you don't sell the colored people. I'm in business to sell goods, and your money's as good as anybody's if it's honest money. It's honest money. My grandmother earned it by harder work than selling goods over a counter. Do you wish to sell me the veil? Four ninety-eight. Very well, Mr. Goldie. My change, please.
When are you fixing to leave, honey? Oh. In the morning. There's a train at nine. Then in that case, I won't fix you a nice hot supper tonight. Oh, Granny, please don't trouble yourself. I don't... Howdy, Aunt Dicey. Howdy, Dr. Joe. Howdy, Pinky. Here, have a chair, Dr. Joe. Thank Somebody you. sick out this way? No, nobody's sick. I got some news for you, and I thought the sooner you knew it, the better. A copy of Miss Ames' will. She left to Paul's law book to her cousin, Mr. Woolley. Family portraits, too. And a jewelry to Mrs. Woolley. Good. Miss Woolley sure likes all kind of G. Joes and fixings. To my faithful servant and friend, Dicey Johnson Colored, I leave all personal clothing of which I die possessed. Bless her heart. Sometimes I think she always get her shoes extra big. Because when they fit her just right, they pinch my bunion. And I'm mighty proud to have her clothes, too. Miss M left you the house, Pinky, and everything in it. The land, too, about 20 acres. The remainder of my estate I give and bequeath to the aforesaid Dicey Johnson's granddaughter, Pinky. This bequest being an expression of my genuine regard for her and my confidence in the use to which she will put this property. That what the paper say? Here. Read it for yourself. You say it for a fact, Dr. Joe? That's the way she wrote it. But if I were you, I wouldn't count on it just yet. You see, the Woolies, Mrs. Woolley in particular, figured on getting all that stuff. Here, they've already hired a lawyer. You mean they're going to contest it? On what grounds? Undue influence, I suppose. Question Miss M's sanity. That sort of thing. There's already been some talk. So that's why Mrs. Woolley and those men in town. Don't you think Miss M was sane? As far as I know, she was. For that last night, her mind wandered a bit, but that's not unnatural. You just keep that if you want to look it over some more. But I don't believe I'd count on getting it. Better wait and see. I don't know how the folks around here are going to take this. I wonder why she did it. Ain't you going to finish your fried chicken, honey? Oh, I'm sorry, Granny. I wonder why she did it. Well, Miss Emmett had grown powerful fond of you, but she should have known better. Pinky, I've lived in this world a long time, long enough to know for sure that if it's something white folks don't want you to have or something they want for themselves, you might as well forget all about it. She meant me to have it. I show my genuine regard for her and my confidence in the use to which she will put this property. What did she mean? That don't mean nothing where the white folks is concerned. Besides, you going back up yonder, so I her. Gee. Even, Sister Johnson. Evening, Miss Pinky. Hello, Jim. Well, I just started up town, and I thought I'd stop by for a while. Well, Miss Pinky, I hear's how you got some property coming to you. What else have you heard? Well, the white folks are saying you kept Miss M doped all the time. They say she must have been out of her head, and that you must have stood over Miss M and made her write that will. That's nonsense, and they know it. Well, is or ain't, I don't know, but it sure spelled trouble for somebody. If I was you, Miss Pinky, I'd stick close to the house for a while. She's leaving first thing in the morning. Going back up north? Yes. That's good. That's mighty good. And Miss Woolley get the property by default. Everything's fine. No trouble for nobody. Is that the law? Default? Well, unless you get a lawyer and file an answer. Of course, me, I've had considerable dealings with the law, but I ain't licensed. But even if I was licensed, I wouldn't touch your case for a stack of hundred dollar bills that high. I got a nice house and no fire insurance. And I'm glad you decided to be sensible about this thing. Because if you hadn't, I was going to make reservations across the state line and go fishing for three or four weeks. Oh, 
What is it? What is it, child? Pinky. Pinky, tell me. What are you fixing to do? I'll be staying on for a while till this business is settled. Miss M meant me to have the house, and I'm not going to give it up to please Mrs. Ward or anybody. Can't do it, Pinky. You know that I'm retiring. As judge, yes, sir, but that leaves you free to take my case. No, frankly, I don't want to get me up on all this. There's too much feeling. Too many tales around about you and Miss Ann. They're not true, sir. Well, possibly they're not, but... Say, perhaps you could compromise, send it out of court. I'm sure Miss Woolley would be generous. With my property? The court will decide whose property it is. It won't even come up before the court, unless I can induce a lawyer to act for me. But uh, you don't want a lawyer who thinks the will was ill-considered and a mistake, do you? All right, sir. Goodbye. Judge Walker, Miss M was your lifelong friend. Whether the will was a mistake or not, wouldn't she expect you to help carry out her wishes? I'll take your case, Pinky. Thank you, sir. I, of course, I'll pay the customary fees. Oh, no. The expenses you left on me, but there won't be any fee. I'm a fool to take your case, and nobody believe anyone can win it for you. But if I'm going to get into a fight with half the town, it'll be on clean ground. Come see me tomorrow. But Miss Ian owned the property, and he wanted this girl to have it. But that isn't the point, Doc. It's a principle Dr. of the thing. Dr. Joe. Come on. See you later, Doc. Be safe. Dr. Joe, could you help me? Help me to find a job. I only need a few days to help cover the court expenses, and I, I can't ask Granny. She's been ill lately, hasn't been able to work at all. Might as well face it, Pinky. I couldn't possibly get you a job now. A lot of the folks even down on my neck about this thing, blaming me for putting you over there in the first place. If it isn't too much, I could advance you. Oh, no, you. no, Doctor. Thank you. I'll find a way. <laughs> Goodbye. Hello? Pinky? Yes, Granny? This is Dr. Thomas Adams. How do you do? Pleased to meet you, sir. I reckon you got things to talk about. Well, 
on earth are you doing this? I needed some money. Granny was sick. Could have asked me for it. No, Tom. This is something I have to do by myself. I still don't know what it's all about, Pat, or why you think it's important enough to change our plans. Quite a stir in the papers up north. Negro papers in particular. I got a hold of some clippings for you. I read in one of them the trial was set for tomorrow. Read them. Negro heiress defies lynch law. Yes, there, there was a reporter here, but I didn't tell him anything. Negro girl fights to hold her. I had no idea they'd make so much of it. Why go through with it? What for? It isn't too late to back out. The trial's tomorrow. Let it go by default. We don't need the house. I've got plenty for both of us. I'll be sensible, darling. Pack your clothes and let's get out of here. I can't do that, Tom. What are you fighting for? A rundown house and a few acres of worthless land? No. If I should back out now, I'd be letting Miss M down. I can't do that. I can't let her down. I can't let myself down. I'm... My people. They're not your people, Pat. Not really. There'll be no Pinky Johnson after we're married. You'll be Mrs. Thomas Adams for the rest of your life. Tom, you can change your name. But I wonder if you can change what you really are inside. What's behind all this? You haven't really told me. I don't know. I'm not being heroic. I'd hate that. I just know I have to go through with it to the end. You see, they're trying to steal the property. Steal it from Miss M as much as from me. They'll probably get away with it. But I'm gonna make them do it out in the open. Right out in court for everyone to see and hear. It won't be pleasant, Tom. They'll lie. They'll try to humiliate me. They'll try every trick of prejudice. But I, I just... All right, Pat. I'll be there. I understand. We also propose to show, Your Honor, that the defendant, Pinky Johnson, colored, is of a violent nature, quarrelsome, a troublemaker, that she is capable of executing the scheme I have described to you, and that she had every opportunity of doing so. Deceased was unquestionably senile. The fact that she signed the will twice is evidence of a confused mind. She was unduly influenced by the defendant, as I have outlined to you, and she was under the influence of drugs administered by the defendant. Furthermore, this will was written at a time when reliable witnesses will prove she was of unsound mind. May I see that will again, please? In view of these things, we therefore ask that the will be set aside and the property inherited by the next of kin. I yield to you, Judge Walker. Your Honor, I agreed to act for the defendant in this case because I feared an injustice was about to be done. Your Honor, apparently my fears were well founded. Counsel for the plaintiff has made it perfectly clear that my client, in effect, is to be tried because she is a Negro. And because a Negro cannot be permitted to inherit property in this community. <laughs> That is a harsh fact, but we must face it. Though many of us may criticize this bequest, I do not believe that any of us who knew Miss M, and most of us knew and loved her, can accept the contention that she was insane. I do not believe counsel for the plaintiff can prove that undue influence was exerted by my client. I think most of us know how difficult it was to influence Miss M in any respect. We need not look too far for a motive in making this bequest. She was a proud woman who would leave no debt unpaid. This was a real obligation. She took the only means open to her of paying for my client's services through the provisions of her will. The expressed wishes of the dead should not be set aside to gratify the greed or the prejudice of the living. Your Honor, this is a small country town. 
We've always thought that what happened here was our own private concern. This is no longer true. Just as it's no longer true that our country as a whole can exist entirely to itself. What is done in our courts in cases such as this has become a matter of moment in the eyes of the world. Let us examine our conscience. Let us look into our attitude and our tradition. Let us take care lest it be said of us that here there is neither law nor justice. Now, Your Honor, we're all anxious to get to the bottom of this as quickly as possible before the temperature of this room reaches the boiling point. Fortunately, there's one witness who is qualified to testify on the only matters of pertinence to this hearing. The question of Miss M's sanity and the question of undue influence. Incidentally, he will be the defense's only witness. He was Miss M's physician in constant attendance during her last illness. He was also her confidant, witnessed her will, and is the executor of her estate. Dr. Joseph McGill. Your Honor, I disagree with my esteemed opponent's notions of what is or isn't pertinent to this hearing, but I am perfectly willing to have Dr. McGill take the stand at this point. Very well, then. Call Dr. McGill. Do you think that's... Oh, let him put his witness on first. We'll close with ours. Dr. Joe doesn't seem to be here, Your Honor. Well, take a look in the car to see if he's there. He ain't out here, Your Honor. Well, that being the case, we'll have to proceed with the plaintiff's witnesses. Are you ready, Mr. Stanley? Yes, Your Honor. Better find Dr. Joe wherever he is and bring him here. Yes, Judge Walker. G.M. Anderson. Money and a man. I believe what caused the trouble. The usual thing. Well, we picked them both up along with the man they was fighting over. Judge Walker heard the case. That's all I know about it. Yeah, money and a man. Thank you. Your witness. Chief Anderson. What was the fine or prison sentence imposed on my client? Well, Judge Walker, you know there wasn't any. So she was cleared of all charges, is that correct? Well, I wouldn't exactly say that. Uh, wouldn't? You generally always let them off with a good talking to, like you give her. You know how it is. <laughs> well, if you put them niggers in jail every time something like that happens... That'll do. Your Honor, I think this witness testimony should be ignored and stricken from the record. It's totally irrelevant to the hearing. Your Honor, right. Just a minute. The court is capable of deciding any questions of relevancy. Motion denied. Call the next witness. Well, for one thing, on my last visit, this girl simply wouldn't leave the room. And I could see that Cousin Emma actually didn't dare to dismiss her. Then Cousin Emma began to talk about making a will. Well, I tried to cheer her up, but she turned to this pinky and said, what do you think? As if, as, if she, as if she didn't dare to make up her mind alone, which was never like Cousin M, never. What did the girl say? Oh, she spoke up bold as you please and said Cousin M ha had better make a will if she was ever going to. That's the point I mentioned to you. Impudent? Yes, but the way she said it, a fret too. And I'm just glad that Cousin M was allowed to die a natural death in her bed. I think everyone in this courtroom understands what you mean, ma'am. Did you notice anything peculiar about her condition that day? Oh, yes. She closed her eyes while I was talking. She kept dropping off with a stupor. She was doped. And then she told me she was subject to fits. But half the time, she was clean out of her mind. Poor soul, poor soul. Thank you, Mrs. Woolley. Your witness. Mrs. Woolley, you have testified that my client's tone was threatening. Now, Miss M must have made some sort of reply if she was threatened. What were Miss M's next words? I don't remember. She was doped. Didn't she say she thought Pinky's opinion was very sensible because that's agreed with what she thought herself? Were you there, Judge Walker, or are you just being primed by that girl over there? Did you ever hear such... Oh, uh, answer the question, please. Isn't that what Miss M said? I'd certainly remember it if she had. Miss Woolley, do you know the penalty for perjury? I object. Your Honor, I object to this attempt to intimidate the witness. She's answered the question. She doesn't remember. And now if my opponent will stop putting words in the mouth of the dead. No personalities, gentlemen. It's hot enough in here as it is. Well, Your Honor, please rule on my objection. Objection sustained. Thank you. Go <laughs> <laughs> ahead, Darcy. You were there in the room when she was writing her will. Yes, sir, sitting right there, like I always done when my pinky's out. And Miss M was still writing when I left to take the wash of Tom. 
Because Judge Walker and some is mighty particular when they gets the wash. I understand, Aunt Darcy. You know what a hypodermic is? Yes, sir. Did you ever see your granddaughter stick one of those things into Miss Ann? Yes, sir. I see her do it twice. What happened? Miss M talked to herself for a while. You mean raved? Kind of mumble like. Then she go off to sleep like she a little baby. Now, just one more question, Aunt Dicey. What makes you think it was her will that Miss M was writing that day? I know it was, sir. Well, you see, Aunt Dicey, this is a court of law, and you're sworn to tell the truth before God. Some of us think this will may have been written at some other time while your granddaughter was present. Did Miss M tell you she was writing her will? No, sir, Mr. Stanley. But you were sitting where you could see the paper she was writing on, weren't you? Yes, sir, Mr. Stanley. Well, now, didn't you see enough of it to know what it was? He's going to trap her. He knows she can't read and she'll never admit it. Dr. Joe. Come now, Aunt Dicey. Let's have an answer. You know, sir, as well as me, it ain't manners reading what ain't meant for you to read. <laughs> then how can you swear before God you knew it was her will? Now, Aunt Dicey, you answer me the gospel truth. Couldn't this will have been written at some other time? Couldn't it? Couldn't it? Yes, sir. Couldn't Pinky have helped Miss M make a will when you weren't around? I reckon she could, sir. Your witness. Your Honor, we'll waive cross-examination of this witness. All right, Aunt I see you can step down now. I have here a note from Dr. Joe in which he says he's going to be delayed. Now, on the basis of this note, I petition for a brief recess. May I see this note, please? Do I have your permission, Judge Walker, to read this to the court? You certainly have. Sorry, Mary Pickens' baby jumped the gun. When it gets here, I'll get there. Joe McGill. <laughs> Seriously, Your Honor, I object to this petition or to any legal strategy intended solely to drag out this unfortunate affair, which should have never seen the light of day anyway. Judge Walker had as much time as we did to summon witnesses and to make sure they'd be here. As for this note, it's easy to read between the lines. Naturally, Dr. Joe didn't want to hurt his old friend's feelings here with a direct refusal to appear as a witness in this unpleasant case. It's obvious, however, that bountiful nature and the ethics of his profession have come to his aid. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a long confinement. He's not asking for a recess, Your Honor. He's asking for a postponement. Petition denied, Judge Walker. Thank you, Judge Shoreham. <laughs> and I'll have the room cleared. Have you any further witnesses? No more, Your Honor. I agree with counsel for the plaintiff. There's no point in dragging this out any longer. Thank you. The court has heard all the facts and is ready to announce its finding. Thank you, sir. I do not intend to defend the wisdom of this bequest, nor do I intend to base my findings on the conclusions of the witnesses nor on the hearsay evidence admitted here today. This will is a legal document. I have examined it, and I see no reason to doubt that it was written by a woman in full possession of her faculties. Moreover, plaintiffs have failed to establish that any undue influence was exerted by the defendant. The will is therefore declared to be good and valid, and the executor shall carry out its terms as written. But Judge Shorrell! <laughs> understood that any attempt to interfere with the defendant or her property will be answerable to this court. Court is now adjourned. Quiet! Quiet! Please! Judge Walker, I don't know how to thank you. Well, Pinky, you won. You got the house and the land. And you got justice. But I doubt if any other interests of this community have been served.
Come on, Nellie. Let's go. All right, Tom. All right. Houses like this are a drug on the market. We'll find a good real estate man and turn it over to you. We'll auction off the furniture and the silver separately. So, you know, some of those pieces down there look valuable. We'll sell them all in your name so you'll be independent, just in case you decide to run away from me. This is, is quite a room. Yes. Oh, say, isn't this a beautiful fire screen? Miss M was proud of that. Martha Washington is supposed to have done the embroidery. Oh, we can't let this get away from us. We'll have it sent out to Denver. Denver? Didn't I tell you? I've, I've accepted a position in a clinic there. But all your ties are in Boston. Your family. Oh. The, the publicity. Oh, it's partly that, but I've always thought about moving out west. Besides, too many people in Boston know her. They might find out. Pat, you love it in Denver. Some friends of mine are starting this clinic. They want me to go in with them. I can't sell the house, Tom. That isn't why she left it to me, to sell. Or why I went through with the trial. She said with confidence in the use to which I'd put the property. Let's be practical. Her lawyer had it straight when he said she was merely, merely trying to pay off her debt to you. Now, if you let me... No, that wasn't a reason. She left it to Granny. She owed her far more. Miss M accepted service as her due. No, she had some purpose, something she wanted me to do. Come on now, Pat. I know she was a wonderful old woman and all that, and she made a deep impression on you, but she's dead. Your own life is much more important than her purpose if she had It's one. my life she was thinking of. She told me once to be myself wherever I was. Well, that's pretty good advice, but, but... you said yesterday there'd be no Pinky Johnson after we were married. How can I be myself if there's no Pinky Johnson? It was only a figure of speech. Now, come on, let's get out of this place. You're letting all that dirty business of the trial get under your skin. Will you forget it, darling? You mean run away from it, Tom. This time to Denver. Running away for the rest of our lives. Pat, you're all confused. No, I'm just beginning to understand it. She didn't want me to go. She didn't want me to pretend. We talked about it. Pat. That's why she wrote the will. She thought the house would keep me here. But she was wrong. That's why she wrote it. She was wrong, wasn't she? Wasn't she? I'm sick of lying, Tom. We wouldn't be happy, either of us. What do you expect to do? Crawl into a closet and live there for the rest of your life? Close the door and lock it, lock everything? Pat, look at me. Look at me. 
And when you come to your senses, you've got to make a break. Get away from it. I don't want to get away from anything. I'm a Negro. I can't forget it, and I can't deny it. I can't pretend to be anything else, and I don't want to be anything else. Don't you see, Tom? No, I don't. You can't live without pride. Sorry, Tom. I'll never forget you or what you tried to do. But please go now. Don't say anything. Just go. you mean, Miss Anne? Tell me. I'm sure you are. Miss Pinky, you have to do something about Aunt Dice. What is it this time? She's been at that new sterilizer again. Every time I sterilize the sheet, she puts them back. Says they ain't white enough. Well, I'll speak to her about it, but I doubt if it'll do much good. Lunch is laid out, Miss Pinky. All right, I'll get them in. Yeah. Good morning, Miss Hello, T. Joe. T. Joe's gonna do a little flying. Is that right, T. Joe? Yes, Dr. Kennedy. Uh, well, Pinky. Hello, Dr. Joe. Morning, Doctor. Morning, Doctor. Uh, I thought I'd look in on the Freeman boy. Fine, he's in the old dining room. 